But we have Transport Minister Fikile Mbalula in the uh, visuals right next to me. He's doing a briefing about the new trains that have just been delivered in Mabupane. But uh, in the meantime, let's go to another story. Homeowners in a popular Pretoria complex have won action against their property developer. Late last year, the developer, Bulwin Properties, doubled levies, changed access rules and banned short-term letting as it still technically owns the majority of the Blader River Walk estate. It said this was to prevent overcrowding, but owners, and many of whom bought into the scheme, did so to invest in short-term letting. They took their case to the Community Schemes Ombud Service, which is now found in their favour. According to one industry body, over 5 million South Africans live in sectional title schemes. So what does this say about the rights of owners and tenants? And how do we best stand up for ourselves if we do live in sectional titles? Well, Marina Constas is the director of BBM Attorney, specialising in sectional title schemes. Marina, thank you so much for joining us. It's difficult if you're living in sectional title because you feel... Uh, beholden to uh, a body that sometimes, unless you're on the body corporate, you don't have much say uh, about what's really going on in, in your sort of block. Mm. Thanks. Thanks so much, Annika. Yes, you know, the thing is in sectional title, uh, when you do reside there as an owner, you have certain rights and responsibilities, and it's good for people to understand that they do actually have power. Uh, rules are within the scheme to help uh, sort out daily operational running of the scheme. And the laws always said that those rules have to be reasonable. So when the uh, trustees and the developer get together and make rules or amend rules where they don't have the requisite buy-in from the owners, and in this particular case, they needed 75% to withdraw those short-term letting regulations. When they do that, um, then the community scheme ombud is able to step in and declare those rules void. Um, so in this particular instance, you've got people who thought that they were buying into a scheme so that they could short-term let. Uh, they were enticed by that, um, by that regulation. And now you've got the sort of arbitrary withdrawal of that in a rule where owners weren't buying into that rule. And that's really the gist of this case. What is the test, Marina, for reasonability and rationality in a case like this? Well, in law, we talk about a reasonable man test. Um, it should really be a reasonable person test, but it's, it's what would a reasonable person do? And are you looking at consistency throughout the scheme? I mean, at the end of the day, this case doesn't say, the, the adjudicator uh, doesn't say you can't um, prohibit a, a short-term letting regulation completely. I mean, we've got case law that says that if 75% of owners put a rule together in their complex, which which is we don't want short-term letting because of security, because of issues. I mean, it is a problem to have a, a, a complex where you've got people coming in and out treating it as a hotel. And in those cases, the law says that you can actually prohibit short-term letting. But in this case, the adjudica adjudicator felt that they, the directors of the, or the, the, the trustees of this particular complex, as well as the developer, were exceeding their powers. And they weren't being reasonable. They didn't provide evidence to the to the effect that there was so much, um, you know, drama happening in the scheme. That security was a problem. That there was overcrowding. That there was bad behaviour. There wasn't enough evidence before the ombud. So if you've got your evidence, then, then we've got to look at what is, you know, what is the reasonable. What would a reasonable person under those circumstances do or look at? How many home, home, sectional title owners actually? go to the ombudsman and actually have their cases heard and win their cases? Well, you know, our community scheme ombud service um, has been really successful in hearing both mediations and adjudications. So before you go to adjudication, you go to mediations. And we've had thousands of mediations being heard, and the public can actually go, apply. Um, it, it was very cheap. I know that certain amounts have now been waived, but it used to be that you apply for 50 rand, for any kind of dispute which is defined under the Community Scheme Ombud Service Act, so that's for noise nuisance, for rules which, like in this case, are were not um, you know, properly thought through or maybe unconstitutional or discriminatory. You can, you know, there's the financial things that you can apply to the Ombud. So people need to use the Ombud. You need to look at that. It's, it's like the Ombud for insurance, the Ombud for banking. We've got our community schemes Ombud. So people need to be aware of it and take their power back. 
All right, thank you so much, Marina Consas, a specialist sectional title attorney.